So I want to remind people too that you were here uh, once yeah. before in guest preaching. So and your but your church is it's Christ Episcopal in Covington. Right, it's Christ Episcopal in Covington, Louisiana, which is really part of the New Orleans metropolitan area. We're just on the North Shore of uh, Lake Pontchartrain, a quaint little historic town, uh, and only forty-five minutes to the French Quarter. So, <laughs> and I and I do have fond uh, memories of of being there. You guys were so gracious and so welcoming. Uh, uh, to host me, and I really, really enjoyed the Sunday that I was there. So very grateful for that. Yeah, great. Um, and so we're we're talking because you just walked the uh, the Camino de Santiago de Compostela, uh, and you're going to be. There are multiple routes. As part of my research, I learned about the Camino. There are multiple routes of getting to Santiago de Compostela. Um, the main one is across uh, from France, um, the Camino Francais. I suppose, and this is the Camino Portuguese. Uh, and so um, just a little bit of background in case this is the first time people are tuning in. Uh, the Camino de Santiago de Compostela is a medieval pilgrimage route that's been uh, followed by pilgrims for centuries since the Middle Ages. And uh, the destination of that route is Santiago de Compostela, which is uh, the cathedral in that same town where it is said that the remain of St. James are to be laid. And um, so as part of my sabbatical in 2019, I'm gonna make the walk to Santiago on the Portuguese route, starting in Porto, Portugal, and working my way up. And just this past summer, uh, Bill uh, walked uh, much of that, most of that same route, um, and the Spanish kind of section of that route. So uh, doing a little bit of interview now to just kind of get his perspective and, and um, advice for me as I uh, embark on this journey. So uh, the first question I had, Bill, was um, what, made it, what made you want to walk the Camino in the first place? So it, it sort of happened serendipitously. Our uh, chaplain at our school a year ago had taken a group on the English route, which is through Spain, mm. and uh, it's one of the older routes. Um, and uh, so the students wanted to walk it again and walk the Portuguese route, yeah. and uh, the chaplain uh, up and left, <laughs> and so there was a need for there was a need for uh, priestly supervision. And uh, you know, when you when you think about walking the Camino and engaging in a pilgrimage, it really combines everything that I love and everything that I'm passionate about. You're uh, you're reading to learn about different cultures and the history of the place, and uh, you're reading to learn more about the spirituality of the place. You're learning another language. You're practicing those languages. You're connecting with people. You're engaged in physical exercise. You're outdoors. Uh, so, you know, all of those things come together to make for a, a very powerful experience. And um, I was sort of on for part of the pilgrimage, but even, even though I was helping to lead the pilgrimage, uh, there were days that I spent walking in solitude and that was just so powerful because uh, we don't get those times very often when we can just be completely open and pay attention and have sort of an ongoing dialogue with God uh, as new revelations unfold, new people uh, come into our lives. So, you know, walking the Camino for me was extraordinary and I would do it again and I, I do want to go back. Mm. And you cover a lot of distance, so uh, there's a lot of walking that's involved. That's that's kind <laughs> of, is, so, and it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. We uh, you have to walk at least a hundred kilometers to officially qualify for your Compostela. We ended up walking about 120 uh, kilometers, and I think our longest day was about 26 kilometers. Hmm. And, you know, there are points in the day where you're exhausted and your feet hurt and you're, you doubt whether you can go on. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you have a little conversation with God <laughs> and ask for some, uh, some wind at your back and uh, some help and your fellow pilgrims provide support and, <laughs> uh, you know, help each other. You help each other along the way. Uh, but it, it is a physical workout. It's, it's exhausting. And I think that's a, an important part of the pilgrimage because there can be 
you know, a penitential component, a, a commitment component to it. Mm. Yeah, and you were, um, just before we started recording this, you were telling me too about some of these kind of metaphors on the Camino about having to look where you're going and dealing with kind of the beauty of the of the path and also some of the, just the kind of not so nice parts of the journey. Yeah. So can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So uh, I like to remind myself and remind others that when you go on a pilgrimage, I think two of the qualities that are most helpful are gratitude and openness. So just a sense of gratitude for everything you experience, even if it's not particularly lovely or it's not particularly what you had in mind or it's more difficult than you thought. And also just that, that sense of awareness and openness because you never know what you're gonna see. And there are so many things that we miss in our daily lives simply because we're not paying attention. And uh, one of the beautiful things about the Camino is that there are signs everywhere. You know, the shell is pointing the way. Uh, there are arrows painted on sidewalks and walls and trees and all sorts of places. But you really do have to pay attention to the signs. The signs are there. Hmm. <laughs> uh, but if you're not really looking for them and you're not uh, truly engaged, you will, you will miss those signs and you will end up uh, probably headed in a direction that's not going to take you where, uh, where God is hoping you will go <laughs> or at least get you back on track. And, you know, conversations with other pilgrims can be helpful uh, along the way. And, uh, but you're right in terms of the varied terrain. There was a day that we spent walking through an industrial park. There was a day that we spent uh, mostly walking through an urban uh, part of, of various cities. And then there were other days when we were out in the glorious countryside surrounded by trees and the sound of birds and the sound of running water. Mm. Uh, and it was just so lovely and so renewing. But I think all of that uh, comes together to really inform the journey. Mm. And were there uh, particular places or experiences that were highlights for you along the way? Yeah, you know, so um, I, I think the highlights for me were uh, mainly about connecting with people uh, as much as place. And, you know, you keep running into the same people every day because you're pretty much on, on the same path, stopping in the same cities. And uh, the cities, of course, the towns along the way, uh, the hosts that you meet, uh, the innkeepers, the, the restaurant owners, uh, the bartenders, uh, the church sextons, all of these people, uh, you know, we met clergy along the way. All of these people have something uh, to share and something to, to offer. I think my, my favorite place was really arriving in Santiago de Compostela, being in the chapel, uh, being in the square, in front of the chapel, seeing how many tired and weary pilgrims had come from all over the world mm -hmm. and how they were sort of basking in and savoring that moment and that sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. and that sense of, of peace and, and gratitude that, that comes with finishing that journey. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what was, um, did you have kind of a, a spiritual takeaway from the experience? Um, yeah, so, so there, were, there were a number of them. I think uh, uh, one was simply remaining open uh, to what God might be wanting to reveal and being open. I'm an introvert, so I really love the solitude part, mm. uh, but it was also important for me to remain open to new people that I might meet. And I was telling you earlier that uh, we met a family from South Africa, uh, multi-generations, extended family. There were aunts, uncles, mom, dad, daughter, cousins. And we kept, you know, after the, a couple of days of running into these folks, you begin to engage in conversation and you begin sharing your story. And you begin talking about uh, matters of the spirit, because even though you may come from various traditions, uh, you know, most people are there for a spiritual purpose of some sort. Mm. Um, and, and also, I think uh, the recognition that with God's help, 
we can go on <laughs> because there really were some days uh, <laughs> when I was exhausted. Some of the teenagers I was with were like, I am not taking another step and I'm never doing this again. <laughs> and, you know, just reassuring each other, uh, taking a moment uh, to check in and support each other, which is a lot of what our faith journey is about in community. Hmm. Uh, made a huge difference for all of us. And uh, I'm not sure we could have made it without, you know, depending on each other, supporting each other, uh, getting each other back on track. And, you know, this is the way, uh, this is the way you go. And there's a, there's a rest stop just ahead. Uh, so all of that uh, was, uh, I think, a profoundly spiritual and moving experience for me. Mm. I just love uh all that you're sharing about the pilgrimage experience, because you know, pilgrimage is, um, it's an ancient spiritual practice, you know, that goes back. Um, I mean, for us Lutherans, Martin Luther even made a pilgrimage to Rome, um, yeah. but people have been making pilgrimages to Jerusalem, to Rome, to Santiago, uh, all over, you know, Europe in the, in the Middle Ages, which is kind of my favorite time of church history. And yeah. I've read a lot about, but um, that there are, it's not just about the, the walking and it's not just about the destination. It's all these spiritual, uh, gleanings that you get uh, along the way. So right. um, your advice for new pilgrims. So, so uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, uh, so what would, I, okay. So here, here are a couple of things. Get really comfortable walking shoes, <laughs> really comfortable walking shoes. And uh, you know, there are some tricks of the trade in terms of, you know, appropriate ways to prepare your feet. Because uh, your your feet are gonna are gonna uh, encounter uh, some challenges, <laughs> and they're gonna need to be upheld and supported in love and in prayer. Uh, and uh, you know it doesn't hurt to to prepare physically uh, in terms of working out uh, the spiritual preparation. Of course, you know uh, reading up on. Uh, the spirituality and theology of pilgrimage, hmm. uh, reading up on the places, uh, reading up on St. James, uh, learning uh, some Portuguese and some Spanish just to facilitate some communication. Mm -hmm. I think all of those things uh, are, are really helpful. Uh, packing as light as you can. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I love that. I think a lot of the, um, just to get my head around the experience, a lot of the reading I've been doing is about what to bring in the gear and, you know, how, what kind of socks you should wear and shoes yeah. and, and those kinds of things. And I imagine that you could get so, um, so into that part of the preparation that you don't leave enough time for the spiritual preparation. Right. Um, so that, uh, to, to hold those together, which I'd say is part of the gift of, having now what like eight months to prepare <laughs> right, right. there's enough time to learn a little spanish and uh and read up on the blogs about people who have have uh and have conversations with people who have walked the camino and and yeah. do some do some reading as well so, yeah yeah one other thing i was going to mention that might be fun if you're uh if you're able to to do this uh and i wouldn't focus too much on it because i think you want to be be fully present you know, for the experience, but I was able to post some photos and even some videos mm. uh, from the Camino uh, and folks uh, in my home congregation and others could share in it with me and kind of see what it was like. Cause a lot of people really don't know what it's like. Yeah. And um, so in a sense, they, they sort of came along for the walk uh, mm. in certain places and uh, so I would encourage you if you can do a little bit of that, you know, without uh, being too focused on that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be nice for your folks. Yeah. Yeah. We're one of the things that we're working on as a family is thinking about how we document the whole experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and do it in a way that doesn't uh, take away from being present mm -hmm. to what we're doing. But is it video or is it photography or journaling or um watercolors that you know one of my daughters wants to do as we go around Europe and um, really being able to uh, to capture the experience and share it when we get back home right and I you know and I think one other maybe small bit of advice 
there were days when we walked so far that basically um, the only thing we could do was fall into bed <laughs> <laughs> and maybe take a shower. Uh, but, you know, I think it's good to leave some time for uh, spiritual reflection, mm. you know, for reading, for journaling. And mm. um, uh, if that means maybe you walk a little bit less, because you're still going to walk far, you mm. know, there's no doubt about that. Um, and I think uh, maybe to break it up a little, a little in a little more balanced way, mm -hmm. uh, so that you do have time to reflect on what you experienced and to journal about it, um, and to share it, to to ponder it, uh, I think makes a big difference. Yeah, great. Well, Bill, this has been so great. I've so enjoyed um, reconnecting around this and yeah, hearing about your great. experience. So I'm you are. You. I know you're going to have a great experience. Thanks, thanks, and uh, you are a, a friend of UDLC. Uh, you know, I feel like this great connection that you guest preached here, and we had a beer at Forest in Maine, my favorite <laughs> brew pub after church, and uh, we just stay connected online, and, um, and I'm really glad that uh, you took the time to, to share your story with me. Happy to do it, and uh, hey, who knows, may run into you on the Camino next time. Hey, come on, <laughs> we'll go. <laughs> All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot, man.